Hi there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. Now, today is the third day of the build of my Buccaneer from Airfix in 148th scale. Today I'll be finishing the main fuselage and the wings and the tail. I'll be making a start on the paint and I'll be doing some of the details and other bits and pieces. Now, if you've watched the other videos, you already know how to show your appreciation, but if you haven't, and this is the first one you've watched, firstly, hell of a time to dip into the series, but welcome anyway. Secondly, either give it a thumbs up in the like button below. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by clicking that small logo down there. And if you want to support me in a more concrete way, you can do that through my channel partners in the information box below or through Super Thanks or, of course, any and all of the above. OK, remember, please, that this aircraft was actually purchased through the generosity of my channel supporters. So thank you all once again. Let's crack on with this amazing kit. OK, so we're back to the wings now and I'm going to just pop these ECM pods onto the underside of the wings here. They push in with a really satisfying click. Um, we just have to put a tiny little dab of ultra thin cement around that and that will be done. Then the wing tips here just slot in like this. And if you've made the wing correctly, if you've got the pieces nicely lined up, Again, this will slot in almost without glue. I, mean, I haven't put any glue on this so far. And it's quite firm. So that's fantastic. Note by the way, even on this edge here, even on the edge there, you've got rivet details. Isn't that beautiful? Then finally for the wing, for the moment at least, is the massive aileron slides into place like that. Again, look at the alignment. The accuracy of the alignment on this kit is absolutely beautiful. The inboard flap sections come in halves, and as usual, we can just put them together. The fit, once again, I'm getting bored saying this, the fit is really lovely, and a bit of um, extra thin cement, and that will be done. Same for the other side. Well, for the first time on this kit, I will say it is the first time, I'm having problems with these um, ejector pins here. Um, from what I remember, these, these are the bits of plastic that stick up, so when they're moulded, there are pins. When you take the mould apart again, there are pins that go and push this out, I think. Anyway, um, these are supposed to be ground down, and they're, they're really definitely proud. I don't know if you can actually... S oh, yeah, you can just about... I shall bring it a bit closer. You can see it does stick down a little bit. You've got to wipe that off. Otherwise, these will not stick together properly. So it's the first time on this kit that I'm having to sand down some ejector pins, which, you know, considering how far I've been, how far I've got, isn't too bad. But anyway, there we go. I do have to sand them down. Okay, so I've now sanded all the ejector pins off of both sides. Um, this side wasn't so bad. This side's a bit more tricky because the uh, locator rings here raised up, which doesn't help. But anyway, so hopefully now it all goes together. It clicks and it's absolutely flat. Perfect. So just something to watch out for. This is the beauty, of course, of dry fitting. We saw this problem. We cured it. And now... It's perfect. And while the tail is setting, I'll put the inboard flaps into their place on the back of the wings. Now you can set these again. You can set these for landing, which is, uh, I think, what, 40-ish degrees or something, 30, 40 degrees. It says it in the book. Or you can leave them stowed like this. Another thing we have to make is the radar warning receiver that sits on the top of the fin or vertical stabilizer as I'm told I should say it and um, there's quite a few locator pins and then it all clicks together and can be set with our favorite little ultra thin cement right, when the tailplane horizontal stabilizer 
is built it slides into place here on top there's a locating ridge for a little tab underneath a hole for a tab underneath there we go then the next bit on is the ECM cap on the fin pushes down there then on the tail the very back end of the tip of the fin is a little cap piece that goes on here like so and then at the front of the fin this bullet fairing sits so okay all very good and so lastly for the tail we put the elevators into place like so and then the rudder slides in underneath like this that's the tail completed for the moment we haven't done the air brakes obviously but that's the most of the tail complete I don't know if you can sit, see I hope you can that this bit here this is an ejector pin and although it's almost flush it wasn't quite flush so when this piece went in originally it didn't sit absolutely flat so um, I've sanded it down it don't, took like 10 seconds to sand that down with just a bit of fine paper and now it goes in beautifully and there's another piece that fits in to blank off this part here that one goes in straight away very easily then at the front end of the bomb bay here I guess is the bomb bay mechanism it slots down into that first then flush up against the wall very good now you have to do that even if you're going to put the uh, Bombay door on because it supports it at the one end I'm not however I'm going to have the Bombay door open even though I've got Martel missiles just because I love the look of the Bombay when it's done there's all sorts of pipes and stuff like that to do so I'm going to let that dry give it a spray um, do the interior color and then start fitting up the pipes inside do a bit of weathering as well Okay, so we'll start putting in some of these wiring looms that we've been given and they look fantastic I have to say just slot them into place make sure they're okay and then a quick dab of the old ultra thin maybe at the back of the mountings here and then just make sure it's all pressed into place and there we go and just do that for the rest of the loom and there we go a bit of weathering and the pipes go in and i have to say this bombay looks absolutely stunning i'm going to keep it open even though i've got the martel missiles it deserves to be seen it's absolutely beautiful what a great design job next i'm going to start building the wheels now Paramedic tells me he would have preferred to have had the hub separate from the tyre, but again, it was an issue of parts counts and all the rest of it, so they're all in one piece, but you know what, they fit so well, we'll just clamp that together, bit of um, ultra thin cement around it, bit of sanding, job's done. And it's the same deal with the undercarriage legs, they just sort of clip into place. Like so doesn't seem to be a locator at the bottom which is a bit weird but there we go get that into place 
there we go that's, that's actually a really really tight fit so what we'll do is we'll put a clamp on that and again run some extra thin cement around it to seal it in place okay so we're preparing the everything for spraying of the final primer coat um, and then the uh starting the painting so the uh, mask on the engine inlet is in place the cockpit i've masked off the windscreen and what i'm going to use i'm going to use this spare canopy the other canopy in the set as a mask for the cockpit i've just put a bit of uh tape here i've cut the back of the uh canopy off because it actually sits over the fuselage here i've cut the cut it down but i've also put in some tape here to sit behind the ejection seat to sort of seal it up so we sort of hook that over the ejection seat and into place and i've kept it in place with just a couple of dabs of um that white pva glue we use um just a couple of dabs of it though so that would should just hold it in place but it will make it easy enough to take off later on and the engine inlet, so I spent all that time um, make, making them nice and tidy and painting them and all that. I've just put a, a piece of tape on the inside of it, just rolled up a piece of tape, put it in, and then sort of spread it out using tweezers and then packed it with a bit of tissue paper. Um, the undercarriage base here already are packed with paper as well. So it's pretty much ready once that's set in place for a first very gentle prime coat just to make sure that everything's nice and flat and where it should be well most things are going to be primed in gray but things like these engine inlet lips ramps whatever this is going to be in bright metal so i'm going to do these first in a base of black Likewise, the interior framing of the windscreen is black. So we paint on black first, then do the exterior color later. Then there's a pale desert yellow that goes on the frame next. The undercarriage legs are in light ghost grey. And then I'll start doing some pre-shading of some of the panel lines. So that's the fuselage pre-shaded now. Um, all we've got to do is let that dry nicely and then start building up layers of the top coat, which is, of course, extra dark sea grey. Right, so now we've got the shading pre-done, so we're just going to apply a coat of extra dark sea grey. Now it's had a few drops of thinner put in, so it's not a really, really strong coat. As you can see, you put a, a quick line down and, and you can see the lines are maybe a little too prominent still. So we'll do another quick coat of color over those. Yeah, 
there you go and that's much more like it so a hint of detailing a hint of discoloration we don't want too much okay and just do that for the rest of the plane and we do have to remember to touch up the ends of the wings and also on the fuselage as well for the interiors here of the wing fold this is uh, ghost grey US ghost grey okay so you start building the air brakes now the deployed air brakes so this cover goes on the outside of the operating arm like so Then the actuator structure sits against the petals. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to put the center in first and then just sort of ease these outer arms into their locations. They do go, I promise you. So you might find that the W is slightly a bit sort of compressed. You have to open it up a little bit to sit in, but they will sit in with not too much struggle and that will be the actuator and the petals open. Then the tail fairing on each side slots into place like this and the fins, the air brake fins fit into little recesses there and there. Okay so we'll just clamp that up, bit of ultra thin cement and that is good to go. I've no doubt that uh, very soon we'll be able to just mask these off there'll be a kabuki set that turns up and we'll just be able to mask these off and airbrush them but for the moment i haven't got that so i'm having to do it the old-fashioned way with its possibilities for mistakes but i don't know it, it's it's strangely cathartic So again, we kind of hook it over the back here first. And then at the front, it clips into a hole there. Yep, there it is. And then on the side here, there's another hole it clips into like that. And that's the pipe set. Right, well, I remember, I'm gonna paint the exhaust nozzles here. These are going to be burnt iron here. And I'm just gonna use like a, kind of like a dark aluminium or something like that for the, the uh, these little cutouts. Um, I don't know, I, don't, I just don't think gun metal's the right colour somehow, but anyway. I'm not worrying about the insides because I've decided to have the FOD covers on. Well, while I'm waiting for the f rest of the fuselage to settle down, I am gonna start making the missiles with which I will arm my Buccaneer. Two TV guided Martels and one radar guided Martel, which means I'll also have a data link pod for the TV missiles. There we go. So what we'll do is get them roughly in place like that, clamp them up, extra thin cement around, and that should be fine. Now with these missiles, we're going to put the um, the wings on now. You'll notice on the top of the missiles is these little tabs, and they make up with these little tabs on here, which also has the mounting slot. So that's going to be the top of the missile like that. Okay, the, the bottom of the missile is smooth. It hasn't got the tab on there. There we go then, we've reached that time where I've got a whole lot of decals going on, plus I need to finish the undercarriage, the weapons, outside bits like aerials and so on. 
Um, after that, it'll be a case of weathering and a few bits of other detailing and then finish the ladders and the FOD covers and stuff like that. So I think probably two more days at the most. Now, if you're enjoying being along for the ride, then please do remember to say so by clicking the like button below. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel through that link in the bottom right corner. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.